Last October, in the quiet Mississippi town of Pascagoula, two local men confronted authorities with a rather bizarre story. Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker told of a strange craft landing near their fishing site and of being taken aboard by three unearthly creatures. The two men were questioned under hypnosis and lie detectors, but their story... Hi guys, unheard. welcome back to the 401 Files. It's an absolute pleasure, as I always say, to be joined by so many like-minded people from all around the world. I'm back out today, as you can see, no doubt, in the National Park here in the UK. And I'm not going to say where this is, but it's a place that is notorious for strange reports. Things like UFO abductions, mutilations, the paranormal, and even strange cryptids. You name it, this place has stories of that kind coming from this area. Now, it's a rainy, overcast, horrible winter's day, which means that the National Park is very, very quiet. And I think that that just adds to the eeriness of these type of videos. So without further ado, guys, please do kick back, relax, and enjoy. So I've just pushed in off the main track, the rain. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's coming down quite heavy outside of the forest. And so I've just pushed in to get some cover. The wind is picking up as well, and it really does have some airy vibes about today. I never saw any cars on my drive-in. There was no cars parked up anywhere in the car parks. I didn't pass any people walking dogs or out on the bikes to get to this location. So it feels like I've got this national park to myself and it makes sense you know it's a horrible day this is the type of day that people would be more than happy to stay inside with the heating on watching horror films snuggled up with a coffee and here i am in a notorious hot spot known for strange reports and weird things going on trying to investigate and explore i absolutely love it this is what i live for i think i've mentioned this before on the channel but it is true it's very true and i think that a lot of people here may be able to relate, is that without any prompts, I believe I could make a really good guess as to when Halloween is on the horizon. Um, because something changes. And I know that the days become shorter and the nights become longer, but there's something else, I can't explain it. There's a really weird, creepy, ominous vibe when we start to approach Halloween. And um, I'm definitely feeling those vibes today here in the forest. It's a, it's a weird sensation. And I, like I said, I wouldn't need any prompts of anybody. I wouldn't need to see any decorations hung up in the shops. I would just know because of this shift in, in atmosphere. So I'm just making my way through this forest. Um, Trying to see where I pop out at the other end. If there is more forest to go at once I come to a clearing of any kind, then I will carry on. Um, I just want to venture off into places that I've not ventured off before because I speak about this a lot. That is when you are likely to experience strange phenomena. It's when you have a change in pattern, when you do something different. Maybe it's a different time of day that you set out. Maybe you're with different company or it's just a completely new area that you've never been to before. It's likely when you make changes like that things will happen. Now, I don't know why that is. I have no idea why that would work in the way it does. But if we look at most chance encounters, there was a change of some kind. Like the Travis Walton case, for example, they, they decided to work later that night to get the, uh, to get the contract finished. Um, Betty and Barney Hill were on their way back from um, a trip visiting, visiting family that wouldn't have been something that they regularly regularly did. And this happens all the time. It's always when people are in a place that they don't normally they don't normally go to, or they've gone there at a different time of day. Something has changed at the time of an experience. Now, is it the human making the change that creates the experience? Or is it just a chance encounter? Um, who knows? I don't I, like I said, I don't I don't understand myself how this works, but it does. And so I'm gonna keep pushing through this forest and exploring as best I can. Some really uh, weird tight jelly fungus i'm gonna to have to google this when i get back see what this is but you know if there was ever a indication that we live on an alien planet i mean what the hell is this 
and this is why I love exploring. This is why I love getting out because you can imagine finding something like this when we venture out into the solar system in search of life and we come across different planets. We might stumble across stuff like this, some kind of jelly fungus. I don't know where the spores would come out of this. Like if this is, if this is a fungus, I'm gonna have to research this and um, hopefully let you guys know what it is. But yeah, if you leave it alone, Lily. If you guys do know, I'm always open to learning new things. Please do drop down in the comments box below and um, bring me up to speed. What is this? But since I was down there, and since I was a physician and several other scientists and investigators were asked to, to uh, consult and, uh, and look into the situation, I was asked and if, would I mind if I would be present, and I said I wouldn't mind at all. And while it is still very difficult for us to believe that a, that a, a, a spaceship landed and that robot type uh, creatures came out and actually took these two people into, into the spaceship, these men in my opinion, believe that they saw this and that they were being honest in reporting what they have reported. So as you can see, um, the rain is really starting to come down now and I've uh, made my way out into this opening, it's clearing, which is really nice to be honest. I know it's raining and I'm getting soaked, but it makes a change from being on my hands and knees at points, crawling through this claustrophobic forest. That's how tightly knit some of these trees are at certain points um, when I'm making my way through. So yeah, I do always find these openings quite interesting as well. You know, a lot of stories of cryptids happen in very similar areas to where I am now. And it's mainly because animals that we know, badgers, foxes, wolves, deers, everything else, they have to make their way from one part of the forest to the other. And it means cutting across these clearings. Now this here is a fire break, I believe. I believe that the Forestry Commission do put these in place to stop the spread of fire um, and save parts of the forest. But nonetheless, it's still a clearing. Whether it's man-made or natural, it doesn't matter. Animals will have to cross this at some point to um, patrol their territories or venture further afield for food and other resources. And it's in places like this that, you know, the unsuspecting onlooker or the hiker walks out, looks down the trail and they see something bipedal, upright, that doesn't resemble anything of human nature. And that, that's what fascinates me. It's not just the animals that we're familiar with using these crossings, but other things as well have been seen. So I always like to sit out in these areas and just take 20, 30 minutes absorbing all the different sounds and just being very, very still and quiet to see if any, anything does emerge. And it sounds like Lily's chasing a pheasant. Lily, come. Oh, there it comes. Beautiful birds. Um, noisy, and they can scare the life out of you when you're in the forest. Lily, this way. Lily, come. She's on a mission. <laughs> it's really starting to rain quite heavily, so I'm going to push back into the forest, keep exploring, keep moving. Um, but first of all, I'm going to cross this open ground and um, get into the thicker stuff. Lily's got herself trapped behind this netting. Don't know how she got under there. Lily, Lily, this way, this way. Over. Good girl. That's how she did it.
got to be careful of stuff like this because some of those come way past waist height <laughs> and it's not a pleasant experience walking around absolutely soaked to the bone Good girl, good girl. Stay close. So I'm just on this game trail right now. I don't know if you guys can make this out, but it, he sorry, one minute. But it's heading directly, sorry. It's heading directly alongside the forested area to my left. And this really overgrown um, fern an opening i don't know what i what i don't even know what you call that but it's just like an open area to my right full of fern really deep divots in the ground lots of big sinkholes and this is a game trail that cuts right between the two so i'm just going to follow this down for a little while see if we can maybe make out some tracks and um see where we pop out at the end but this is a really eerie part to have come out in and um, beautiful as well absolutely stunning but i'd be lying if i said that it wasn't all so creepy. I think maybe because I've got this whole feeling of being sandwiched in, you know, I'm in the middle of these two very um, rugged terrains. Like if I, if I needed to run off and dart off into the forest, look at how thick that is. There's no chance of me making any kind of pace through that. And then if I needed to dart to the right, I've got all this to contend with. So it's giving me this really um, claustrophobic type feeling because I am stuck on this track. I could either run forward or backwards. But if something come out in front of me and behind me, I'm pretty much screwed at this point. Whoa, what's that? I'm gonna head over there. I've just seen something in... Just seen something over in the forest. I don't know what that is. It looks man-made, but... It seems out of place, so I'm just going to go investigate what that is. So I've just come out onto this track. Um, what I thought was something man made wasn't. Um, I think it was maybe just wildlife that it was stood there very, very still and then darted off. But I'm waiting for Lil to come back. Lily, come! It's been hard going been very hard going because i've been off the beaten track i'm going to continue to keep doing that but every now and then you do come across routes like this um, a lot of these are used by the forestry commission logging companies when they need to get into these deeper um, parts of the forest to take out the, the woods so very rarely do you see people on these kind of tracks but it's always nice again like i've said to get out in uh, um out from the forest and just onto one of these clearings for a while reset your bearings and then crack on again so this rain doesn't look like it's got any... Look at this dog. Absolutely drenched, like a drowned rat. Yeah, this um, this rain doesn't look like it's going to be stopping anytime soon. I'm not too fussed. I'm prepared for it. I've got a waterproof coat. And um, I'm really enjoying myself. It's been nice. It's been really good. So long may it continue. Do you know what really fascinates me? <laughs> I've just been thinking about this walking down this trail is goblin type creatures you know we hear stories especially coming out of the us where these little critter type beings 
almost extra, extraterrestrial in nature. Some of these terrorize the residents of a home far out in the middle of nowhere. They try and climb on the roof, try and break in. And yeah, those, those, those kind of stories really interest me. Um, and I could be wrong with saying this, but the Kelly Hopkins encounter, maybe it was that, maybe it wasn't, I can't remember, but I'm sure there was a similar type incident to what I'm talking about right now, where these little beings or these little critters tried to break into the premises and torment the, uh, the residents there. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Um, but it's not just critters as well, is it? We hear about um, dogmen type creatures as well turning up at people's premises and trying to break in or attacking the, the residents. It's a creepy old thing. But I do, um, I do get fascinated by those types of stories. I've just come to a fork in the road. I'm trying to work out which way I should go. Um, there's four different choices here and I kind of don't want to make the wrong one. <laughs> but this is one behind me here this one here and here as well so yeah I think I'm gonna go this way I'm gonna take a right right turn so I've just jumped down into this sinkhole and there's this really um, it's quite deep hole that goes down into the ground even further now it's not continuous I can't see the end of it but it made me think like if that carries on going or if something helps it along its way and starts digging even further how many of these are in this area and how many more could pop up or join and connect in different parts of the forest. Now, if that was the case, you know, anything could stay hidden, anything at all. This is part of the North Yorkshire Moors National Park. There are caves on this national park um, and still some yet to be found, they believe. So who knows? It's just another great way that something trying to remain hidden could remain hidden if it really needed to. A lot of people have speculated for years that cave systems are their preferred means of travel. Obviously they have craft if we're talking about extraterrestrials and things, but if we're talking about something walking, using this landscape as its own, then a cave would be ideal. Every year, thousands of people venture off to explore the labyrinth of hidden trails here in the National Park. Most people tend to stick to the designated routes that are laid out before them. However, if they were to venture away from these trails, they would experience a very different National Park. Forgetting about the amazing views and the Milky Way galaxy, which can be all seen here with the naked eye, they would experience an untouched world of darkness and an eerie silence that can be sometimes hard to even describe. Even for the experienced outdoorsman, the feeling of being alone here or lost can be a terrifying experience. The forest is no stranger when it comes to having a dark history. In the early 90s, seven people were found dead over a period of several weeks in this very national park. The bodies had all the classic UFO mutilation symptoms, including the removal of their tongues, eyes, blood and hair. Of course, the media quickly responded and the initial press release was that somebody had placed seven naked mannequins out in the field. But even today, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of UFO reports and reports of other strange phenomena that continue to circulate from this area. Okay, so I'm quite embarrassed to mention this, <laughs> but I'm lost. Uh, the plan today was to venture off um, to places unknown, areas unknown. I got caught up with the filming, keeping my eye on Lily, and I've been walking for a few miles through the forest. Every trail I've come on now doesn't look familiar to me, and there are many of them, so... I have a sense that I'm miles away from the car. The signal here is terrible, there's only a few hours of light left, and I've got about 50% worth of battery left on my phone, so... I have got a torch. Um, and I'm sure that I will pop out eventually to somewhere that looks familiar, but I've been walking well over an hour now. And because I've been going through the forest off the beaten track, 
it's difficult to gauge which way I should be heading. I've lost complete orientation of where I started out. So um, I need to walk faster. <laughs> I need to find a track and hopefully one that looks familiar to me so I can find my way back to the car. Otherwise, this is gonna be a hell of a long night and not one that I anticipated. The weirdest part is that just when I think I know where I am, there's another trail on the trail that I'm already on that shouldn't be there. So then that indicates that I'm not where I thought I was. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep filming. Eventually I'm gonna have to find somewhere that looks familiar, but it's how far do I walk before before that, that route comes about. The rain is still coming down. Like I've said, there's not much more light left in the day. And I can't think of anything worse than being stuck out here, unplanned, after dark. <clears throat> Again, you see, like, ahead of me now, I thought I knew where it was, and it's opened up to an area that doesn't look familiar to me at all, so I'm definitely not on the right track or where I thought I was. Here's an interesting turn of events. So, I'm still on my way back to the car. I don't know what that was. The camera just went all weird. It's probably waterlogged, so I'm not sure what the audio will be like either. Um, but I'm making my way back to the car and the Google Maps has led me down a trail that does look familiar, but not for very good reasons. This is the Bummer Wolf Trail. If you guys remember a few videos back, um, I came down this trail and told the story of a guy that apparently saw something run running alongside him one night through the forest while coming here on his mountain bike. So yeah, I'm now walking that exact trail, which is quite eerie. Yeah, just as soon as it turned me onto this track, I thought, hang on a minute, this looks familiar. Um, and the reason it looks familiar is because right across the path, is tree root after tree root after tree root all protruding and you're kind of just stepping over them as you walk and that's very distinctive um, so that's why I recognized it and yeah this is the Bummer Wolf Trail this is where something on two feet apparently chased or tailgated a guy on his mountain bike coming through here late one night so it's creepy Now I need to pick up the map, I need to pick up signal and see which way I'm going from here. I'm pretty sure it's to the right and then follow this round, but I just want to double check that. Okay, so I've just had like two bar of signal that was really intermittent, it kept dropping in and out. But in that time, I managed to get Google Maps up and I'm 20 minutes away on foot, which is quite a distance really. And it just shows you how easy that is to do. Um, but the map is saying follow the route, the route down this way, come back on myself and join the route further um, beyond these trees but I'm just going to cut straight through the trees maybe save myself some time going right to the end of the track just to come back on myself again this isn't advisable always stick to the track but in in the um, hopes of saving time and daylight I'm going to push my way through this forest which is quite dense and um, at the other side of this I should pick up a track and then I'll pick up some signal wherever I can to bring, bring up the maps again and go from there but 
you know some people might freak out in this situation some people might think that this is idiotic but this is when i feel most alive this is when i have to just really keep calm and, and um yeah and trust my trust my instincts you know i'm gonna be all right that's the thing i'm gonna be all right there's no point worrying it just might have been a long night walking through the dark in a place that really um i don't need to be <laughs> after dark so so i finally made it back to the car um that felt like the longest walk ever what's quite amazing as well is that i'd actually gone really really far away from where the car was parked so i did that without even realizing and that shows you how easy it can be even in the national park to get lost um i'm not sure what the audio will have been like towards the end of this video because the phone was waterlogged i was drenched but i'll carry this on when i get home and talk to you guys some more if it is terrible so then we can make a full video but um, right now i'm just gonna head home get some food and um, get some dry clothes on i took another step back i'm thinking about what i'm gonna do um, and at this point, I, I realized what I was looking at, that one of these creatures was standing right in front of me. If it wanted me, it had me. I was dead to rights. And the only thing I could think to do was put my hands up really slow and show this thing that, yo, I get it. I'm out of here. I'm not armed. I'm not here to hurt you. You want me to leave? I'm gone. So I put my hands up as slowly as I could. I mean, palms up, hey, I'm not armed. I saw its head sway from side to side like it looked at my hands. I saw it take a deep breath and it huffed at me real hard. And this thing is, I'd say about four and a half, five feet in front of me. 